Well, good morning, good folk. I'm Scott from the old curiosity shop, getting ready to pay my $5 so I can cross the Ben Franklin Bridge into the city of Philadelphia. And I'm actually meeting a friend of mine for lunch today. Uh, good morning. Just fine, thanks. How are you? All right, good. Thank you, you do the same. Bye-bye. And, um, and so, yeah, it's five bucks to cross the bridge. You only have to pay it one way when you're leaving New Jersey. You don't have to pay it again when you're coming back into New Jersey from Philadelphia. So I'm meeting a friend of mine at 8th and Market uh, for lunch. But I thought I would tell you, you know, when people say, why you... You get so much done, you get so much accomplished, wow. Well, I am a high energy task oriented person, but I'm very regimented in my schedule. So for example, this is not, you know, a, this is a working day for me. So I treat it just like a job. Now, if I'm having a social lunch, which means I'm gonna be enjoying myself for about an hour and a half, um, I have to make up for that. So yes, I actually set my alarm clock a little earlier today and I put in about 45 minutes worth of work early in the morning before I would normally get started on a regular work day. And then I'll also put in maybe an extra half an hour tonight to get done some extra things because I usually just work through lunch. Ooh, what was that? Uh, hold on for a second, we're having a little, that's fine. That was just the camera. Hands are on the wheel. I just thought I'd let you know that. Now, after lunch, I'm taking all of these boxes to the post office, and then I've got an antique store haul, well, not really haul, but an antique shopping trip to show you, including a phenomenal, phenomenal 1930s Hoosier-style cabinet. Uh, so I hope you'll stay tuned for that. This is not a rerun, not today. Let's go have some lunch. Show what my sandwich is here. Isn't this, doesn't this look wonderful? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. And I can't wait to jump into this. It uh, looks very good. Oh my goodness, I'm excited. Look at this. Yes, put your hands on it. That's a piece of Cambridge. And if I remember correctly, um, it's a pink color that I think they called Tuscan pink. Now it's missing its lid. You can find those lids. Uh, but it really is a beautiful color. And... Ugh, couldn't pass it by. Now, obviously, I'm in a thrift shop before we get to the antique store. You know, you have to stop on the way. The car just automatically pulls into thrift store parking lots, whether I want it to or not. Okay. That didn't really interest me. It was a little beat up. But look at this thing. I've never seen this before. Okay, it's not a turkey toilet. It's a fish. Have you guys seen this? I've never seen it. Obviously, it's missing its fish top. Who made it? I don't know, because I haven't seen it before. And if it had its top, I would have purchased it. Yeah. Let me know in the comments below if you know what that thing is. Or who made it? Now, this item here, I really love this box. It reminds me of cartoons from my childhood, but uh, it's just one of those timers, you know, for the... Uh, look what it says here. It gives your home a lived-in look when you're away. <clears throat> of course, they put the stickers all over it, so that's a problem. And I didn't buy it. People can get those things, uh, modern ones that probably work, that are more accurate. The Christmas here in this thrift shop was eh, eh. Didn't find anything from the era that I like to collect, but I'm always looking, picking through things. And it's fun to see the decorations. You never really know what you're going to find. But I didn't find anything today. Nope. Oh, I did see this. Now, I love the Costco stool. Not the era that I collect or the color, but... That's still a nice one. Did I say Costco? Yeah, that's what I meant to say. How many of you got pinched, got your fingers pinched folding those things up? 
the price wasn't too bad either. Well, let's get to this antique store. Okay. What a day, cold and rainy. But I'm pulling up to get a coffee and a couple little uh, wake up wraps to keep me going. I don't know what time it is. It's mid afternoon and I need a little pick me up. I didn't pack a snack with me today. I've been to one thrift shop and I'm on my way to several more before the sun goes down. So I'll do some filming and maybe you and I'll find something really neat. Well, if I had a spare $225 laying around, I might take this black cat home with me. But that's not the case. It says on here, uh, Halloween black tomcat, $225. And it is a stife. Look, there's an original tag on there. And we always look for the button in the ear and it's there. You got everything. Good hair, nice full tail. It's not dirty. Button in the ear and the original tag. All these cute little animals. There's a squirrel and a lamb and a bear and a monkey. Look at the monkey. And here's another uh, cat over here. They may, all, may not all be stife, but certainly that cat and that bear. See the, uh, the button in his ear? Well, obviously, uh, I'm not at an ant uh, mm, uh, thrift shop. I took a detour and um, walking around inside the uh, Burlington uh, Mall, Antique Mall in Burlington, New Jersey. Look at the rabbit. Now that looks like Henrietta Pussycat from, uh, it says Stife Cat Puppet, $69. That's a little bit more. You guys remember Henrietta from uh, Mr. That's what her name was from Mr. Rogers. Meow, 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 meow. That's what she would say. <laughs> I think it was Mr. Rogers who did all the voices. Look at him. He is, I don't know what he is, but that looks just like, I don't know. I guess Mr. Rogers made the puppets. I gotta go read up on that again. There's a bunny and another little bear. So I'll show you a few things here at the Burlington, I've been here before, uh, the Burlington Antique Mall in lovely Burlington, New Jersey. It's a big place uh, in some great big old, you know, we've got all these old, this might have been a granary or I don't know what the history of this building is, but it certainly is probably about 120 years old. And look at the, look at the ceiling in this old wooden place. All right, let's get with it. Boy, this looks inviting. Let's see what we can find. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> These are from uh, dentists uh, and doctor's offices, medical offices. It even says, uh, it even says sterilizer right there. How many of you, are you guys old enough to have gone to the doctor in the 1940s? Maybe as a baby. Boy, you'd have to be in your 80s. Mm-hmm. But I imagine they were still using those 20 years after, probably into the 60s. Anyway, let's see. There's a Hoosier cabinet in oak. And a summer screen for the fireplace. That is, uh... There's a price on it, but let's look at the dresser set. And I see this Hoosier cabinet, which might not be Hoosier. We're gonna look and see which company made it, but it has, and Good Housekeeping did this in the 30s. There's their seal of approval. It's one of the top women's magazines of those days, and if Good Housekeeping approved, it meant something. Let's see, okay, we'll get up here and see if it's a Hoosier or a Sellers. It's neither one. It is made by, uh, what? Napani? Napani? What? N-A-P-A-N. Napani, Napani. Uh, Dutch Kitchen. And I can't see something brothers is it indiana it is indiana what town in indiana i can't read it 
I guess it's a town in Indiana, Napanee, Indiana. Well, all right. Did I say it right? My friends in Indiana. We'll get back and focus here. That piece of pottery is only $12, the green one on the left, but it's got chips on it. I try not to buy damaged goods. I just try to. Some bells. Look at the old wainsco uh, wainscoting here behind that, behind the wrought iron. See it back there? In either walnut or mahogany, it's kind of faded out a little bit. Dust puff. Let's see what that dust puff is. Dust puff. Um, a new kind of duster and cleaner for automobiles and furniture. It's all in the kinks. I don't know what that means. It's all in the kinks. Save many times its cost in car washing. Decatur, Illinois. Boy, things used to come in really nice tins, didn't they? Look at the old heater covers, duct covers. Mm-hmm. And then there's your typical R.A. Fox print right there with the old cottage. I see that in almost every antique shop I go in. Well, maybe not every. That one's neat. I need to put my coffee down so I can see what the prices are. But here, this gives you an idea. Let me get back in focus. I've filmed in here before. It's really neat to be in here when it rains. The sound that you get on the uh, rooftop. Okay, keep shopping. Now this is a fine example of transitioning from the Art Nouveau era, oh, 1900 to the end of the Second World War, uh, roughly, roughly. And then into uh, the Art Deco era of the of the 1920s, it's a copper-plated vase. And really probably looking a little more Art Nouveau than Art Deco, but it's it's priced at 170. I don't know if it's marked or not, but let's get it down from there. Boy, that is really nice. I don't know if it's marked on the bottom. Let's look and see if we can see any particular maker. I don't see anything. There may be a hallmark somewhere under that tarnish. There may not be. And you know, this might have been, this might have been, it's kind of hard to tell. It might have been silver plated and the silver has been polished off or it might have been uh, yes, that's it. It's, it's copper and you can see here where the silver plate whatever plating was on it is gone is mostly gone so we just have this oh look up at the top there we have Roman numerals uh, that's 25 I'm not sure what the 25 oh and there's a monogram back here I think I see the letters <laughs> you guys figure it out MC MG who knows this might have been a gift for someone, I suppose. Maybe there were two of them. Uh, hmm. The number 25 could, could stand for uh, a lot of different things. That seems a little bit of an older style than what you would see in the night in 1925. So maybe it was 25 years of service. We will never know. Probably will never know. But that was nice. I liked it. Did you guys like that? Okay. Very good example there of 
typical Art Nouveau style. I hope you can see it through the glare. Um, it takes uh, its inspiration from nature, so very organic, flowing forms. You don't see any straight lines. Whereas in the early Art Deco, it's all angular and geometric. And this style, uh, out of France, a very popular turn of the century until uh, 1917, 1916, 1917. Uh, yeah, you know, up to about 1920 at the latest. And then Deco takes over. Let's go find some, uh, some good Deco examples now. Okay, my friend uh, D, the thrill of the thrift, who happens to live in the town, uh, the city of Niagara Falls. There's an original oil painting, 1920s. Tell by the style of the frame, polychrome frame. These were very popular in the 1920s. And that's an original. Somebody hand painted it. Mm-hmm. That's Niagara Falls, all right. Now, I know, Dee, I think you collect some Niagara Falls memorabilia, but uh, you're not over the top with it. So I'm not going to buy it for you, but I will tell you, I'll let you see the tag. Niagara Falls 1920s, $39. I could probably get 20% off if I go up there and bat my eyelashes. Uh, well, I'll hide it. That's what I'll do, Dee, and if you want it, I'll come back and get it for you. Uh, oops, just because she lives in Niagara Falls doesn't mean that she does not mean that she goes over the top with Niagara Falls memorabilia, but that's um, that's an original kind of neat. All right, now I'm, I don't know how I'm going to get out of here. Let me back out carefully. I don't want to knock any scarecrows over. I've already done that. Okay, mid century fans, look at these pair of sort of 1950s, 60s ducks stylized uh, on metal bases, planters, I guess. It's only 30 bucks for the pair. Uh, I've never seen those before. Mm -hmm. They're not marked on the bottom. I did look at them already, but they have that... Uh, typical sort of almost like Royal Copley look to the bottom. So, could be. 30 bucks for the pair. There is damage on one. A, a hunk of it got knocked out. But it was glued back in. And you can take it off of the base and flip it so that that would face the back. But right now they don't have it. They don't have it displayed that way. $30 for the two of them. Not bad. I'm actually getting dripped on. It's really raining. And in a building this age, you're going to have a lot of buckets around catching drips. So if there's water on the front of my camera, that's what's happening. That's, or it's either that or me salivating over things I can't afford. Look at these. Lobsters. Lobsters. What does it say? Is that the cream and sugar? Wow. And the tomatoes. That's very, uh, uh, you're all going to say, <laughs> what are you all going to say? It's very Czechoslovakian looking. But you're also going to say, what, Charlotte Reed? What does it say? It says, a beautiful teapot. And this one um, is Japanese. Let's see, what is it? It's $85. It's pretty. Not Charlotte Reed, who am I thinking of? Oh, I don't know what I'm thinking of. Oh no, one of the sheep fell down. All right. Here's another great big 19, circa 19, late 20s, uh, kitchen cabinet and I've had a chance to look at it before doing the filming and I really want to applaud the person who saved this because if we take a close look we can clearly see it's been repainted 
Uh, if you look, you can see traces of the original paint underneath, which has chipped off. But the the center, the boards here in the center, these appear to be original. It's really difficult to uh, redo these old decals and have them come out. Well, not decals, but this is a painted. I think they saved these inner panels because this detail here does not look like it's been repainted. In fact, I would bet my bottom dollar that these, that the center of the panels is original. And they sort of, they, they match the paint the best they could, but they preserved this old uh, part that's painted on the doors. So I'm really impressed with whoever did that. It's 575, it's a big one. This is an oversized one. Uh, I do like the colors on that very much. They weren't all cream and green, that's for sure. And uh, this one is also uh, Dutch, whatever it was, made by that same company. I'll try to get in there. Uh, can you see that? Can you see the tag? I can't bend over, but Napani? It's either Napani or Napani. It must be Napani. <laughs> it wouldn't be Napani. Anyway, let's open it up. The flower sifter, of course, is still there. And look at these inner panels that are still there. Oh, here we go. Items to buy. Boy, that is rare that that's still in there. Things worth knowing. There are 30 teaspoons of coffee in one pound. Four bunches of celery will make one quart when diced. I won't read the whole thing, but isn't that... You just don't, you don't find it as original like this. Oh, I'm absolutely certain that those panels have the original paint on them in the center. What else do we get? Oh, we get even more. I'm having a hard time because I can't get where I want to be. And it's all Dutch themed. Look at this, measures and weights. A ham weighing 15 and a half pounds before boiling will weigh seven and one half pounds after. And when chopped, will make six and one half quarts. Cookbook holder, look at this. Yeah, boy, you're really getting, what a wonderful state of preservation in every single one of the doors. More household hints and put your spices in here. Folks, you just don't find that. Let me back up again. I am so happy somebody did not chalk paint this thing. Yeah, that's original. I love it. And look at these old, the old hardware they saved and they didn't polish it to death. Look at this. They left some corrosion on there. I applaud this person. They are my friend. Here's another thing's worth knowing. Let's look at one. To bake potatoes quickly, place them in boiling water for 10 to 15 minutes. Pierce their jackets with a fork and place in the oven. That is just too, too hot. 